two key pieces to valuations. And, and those two key pieces to valuations are your revenue. So your top line revenue, well, three, I guess. Your top line revenue, assuming that your top line revenue is a good mix of revenue, that you're not just selling product and uh, non-recurring type things. So revenue of the good type and then profitability, right? So if I have a, a $5 million revenue MSP, but I'm only putting 2% to the bottom line, that company's probably not worth as much as an MSP that maybe is doing $3 million and is putting, you know, 18% to the bottom line. You know, without sitting down pen to paper, I, I would say that lower revenue company is is probably at a higher value than the higher revenue, lower profit company. So you really have to concentrate, I think, on number one, growing revenue, the right types of revenue. So recurring revenue, particularly managed services revenue, is, is going to be the most valuable from a, from a resale type of a, of, of a situation. But you've got to do it in a way that's efficient, that you're making money at it, right? One thing that you definitely cannot do that is it's just not possible, and I've seen it a million times within my own company and, and then also with, within clients, is you can't grow your way to more profits, meaning there's a tendency to think, well, if I just had another half a million dollars in revenue, then suddenly I'm going to make a lot more money. Or if I just had another $100,000 in revenue, suddenly I'm going to make a lot more money. It doesn't tend to happen that way. You tend to, to make more money bottom line by having a business operation that, that works well, that, that, you, that you focus on efficiency and so forth. Now, there are some caveats. If you're sub-million dollars in revenue, then it's much harder to put higher percentages to the bottom line just because there's some kind of baseline efficiencies that, that you can't necessarily afford, like bookkeeping and uh, potentially automation, things, things that you may not be able to invest in as easily if you're two, three, four-person MSP as you can if you're a larger MSP. So uh, it, it's a little bit more difficult in that sub-million, but once you get over that million to million and a half mark in terms of revenue, then you really have to both concentrate on making sure that your bottom line profits are, are good, and, and I would argue that it's 10% or greater in our industry is what I would classify as good profit. Best in class, we know to be on average, so the, the top 25% of MSPs, we know to be around 18% to the bottom line, but 10% or greater is definitely what we're targeting. So assuming you're at that, then secondarily, we need to grow the revenue and kind of work both of those things simultaneously. So I would say that, you know, if I knew, if I have an MSP and, and I know that in five years I want to sell, you know, it, it's pretty, actually pretty easy to work back in terms of how much money I want to get out of my business, what that needs to look like in terms of profitability and, and revenue, and then, you know, figure out whether that growth path is actually going to work and, and whether I can add that much business, my target business in that time frame. So I actually do quite a bit of that kind of succession planning, I guess we'd call that, with some of my clients. So that's something, that's kind of an exercise that a lot of MSPs are, are thinking about, you know, depending on their age and, and where they're at kind of in life and where they want to go. So.